And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three booths here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. The Gospel of the Lord. At this time in the church, we are in the liturgical season of Lent. And most of you know that this is a time when we think frequently and intensely about the passion of Christ about His suffering, His death on the cross. We have the practice of praying what we call the Stations of the Cross, and it's a very profound way to understand, to witness, to think about the great love that Jesus has and the great suffering He endured to save sinners. Jesus prepares His apostles for His suffering and death frequently when He tells them in the Gospels that the Son of Man will be betrayed, that He'll be accused falsely, that He'll be put to death on the cross, and that he shall rise. But just before Jesus enters upon his suffering and death, by which he saves sinners, we have this incredible event, the Transfiguration. He's with his friends, Saints Peter, James, and John, and they see this. They behold Jesus in glory with Moses and Elijah. Jesus is revealed to be all-powerful, all-glorious, and all-holy. He's revealed with the glory of his divinity. And he's manifested as the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy and law. That is represented by Moses and Elijah. You have to imagine that these friends of Jesus, Saints Peter, James, and John, would never have forgotten what they saw on the Mount of the Transfiguration. They would have remembered it until their last breath on earth. In fact, Saint Peter speaks about this in one of his letters in the New Testament. Saint Peter says this, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For when He received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to Him by the majestic glory, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We heard this voice born from heaven, and we were with Him on the holy mountain. He never forgot what he witnessed on the Transfiguration. It was so powerful and so important that he never let the memory of it go. St. John, in a way, speaks about this in one of his letters. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, this life was made manifest and we saw it and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. The transfiguration of Jesus inspired the apostles. It was so powerful that it was something impossible to forget. No matter what other memories would come into their minds, they would never, never forget the power, the glory of the transfiguration. And soon after the transfiguration, Jesus enters upon his passion. He's humiliated. He's falsely accused. He's put to death on the cross. The apostles, even when they faced the humiliation of his, their Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, they still would have had somewhere in their mind, perhaps deep buried in their minds and hearts, what they saw in the Transfiguration. The passion of Christ was so powerful that that dominated their minds, but they still did not forget the transfiguration of Jesus. Yes, they stumbled, but surely they believed that there was more to the story. They, after the death of Jesus, were somewhere in their hearts and minds on the lookout for Jesus to act, 
on the lookout for God to do something profound because Jesus was revealed as all glorious and all powerful, as greater than the manifestation of his suffering. His glory was greater than his suffering. Therefore, they did not despair, even if they fell along the way and were not the best friends of Jesus during his suffering. They did not lose ultimate hope in Jesus. The transfiguration gives the apostles hope because Christ shows to them a glimpse, even for a brief moment, of the end of the journey, of the end of the story of Jesus, which is not an end, it's eternal life, eternal glory. The end of the journey is triumph, the triumph of God's will over all evil, over sin, over the devil, and over death. The transfiguration of Jesus is for us also. I'm so grateful to Pope John Paul the Great for the gift of the luminous mysteries of the Rosary, which he gave to us many years ago. And we meditate on the transfiguration. The transfiguration, as it is a glimpse of the end of the journey of Jesus and his mission of redemption, his victory, it's also a glimpse of the end of the journey for the faithful followers of Jesus. We must Remember this, Jesus is showing you the end of the journey if you're faithful to Him. It's great, it's glorious, it's wonderful. You know that the way of life is hard, it's very difficult, at times it is not pleasant. Some of you are enduring hardships you never thought possible. The faithful disciples of Jesus will endure the same troubles that Jesus did. Sorrow, betrayal, which, by the way, the Catechism says this, is the most painful part of the passion for Jesus. Not the nails, not the crown of thorns, but the fact that he would, had been betrayed by one of his own friends. False accusation, persecution, and death. We can be tempted to lose hope when we face these things, to lose hope, which is a very bad thing. We can be tempted to give up on God. We must, we must remember the transfiguration of Jesus. God wants us to behold the transfiguration in our minds. That's why it happened, and that's why we hear about it in the Scriptures. The end of your journey is victory, is glory, is light in life, if, 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 you are faithful to the Holy Gospel until the end, if you persevere in being a disciple of Jesus. Christ is our only true and realistic hope. In His transfiguration, He is teaching us to put all our hope in Him, in Him alone. In Him we are victorious over evil. The more suffering that we experience, the more suffering that Jesus experienced, which we experience, the more glory we shall receive as a reward. And it's apparent to me that God allows us to share in this glory from time to time, even now in this life. Our faith will be tested. We must remember the transfiguration. Our hope will be tested. We must put all our hope in Jesus, in Him, victory over evil, over suffering, over sorrow, over betrayal, over persecution, over false accusations, is a living reality. This victory is already present in Him. I like to think often that when our faith is tested, we must be known as disciples of Jesus. All of us have been moved very much, indeed with great sorrow, at the suffering of the people in Japan with the terrible earthquake and tsunami. We can't even fathom what it must be like. Can you imagine in your life, you're enduring the hardships of whatever's going on in your life, and now you lose everything. You lose all of your friends, all of your relatives, your home, all of your money, your livelihood, and you survive, but you have nothing. That earthquake, that tsunami, showed to us that everything in creation is insecure. It moved the earth on its axis. Even the earth is insecure, and the seas are precarious. In the face of such horror, in the face of such suffering, can we say, Jesus Christ is Lord? Can we still say, Jesus, I trust in you? If we remember the transfiguration, 
we can. In the Transfiguration, it is confirmed that Christ is our only hope. He is the world's only true and realistic hope. Brothers and sisters, when we think of the Transfiguration, we come to the awareness that what is happening in our life right now is that we are moving towards goodness, that we are moving towards victory over evil, that we are moving towards victory over suffering and over death. We are moving towards eternal glory. Mark my words, if we are faithful to the teachings of Jesus Christ in the Church. Christ in His Transfiguration is showing us what is really happening now. What's going on in your life? Well, if you're a disciple of Jesus, you're moving towards the gift of redemption. That's the biggest thing happening for you right now. Christ is showing us that nothing, that no suffering can compare to the glory that awaits us. We must stay on the course, steady as she goes as a disciple of the great King, of the transfigured Lord Jesus. No matter how difficult things get, no matter how much sorrow and persecution you endure, stay close to Jesus. And we can be sure that one day we shall see Him in glory, and He will say to us, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Master's house. God bless you.